as I was praying, what the Lord gave into my heart to speak to you is uh, from a new theme, a new series that we're going to start. And the series is called Life, Death, Resurrection, and Eternal Life. It's called Life, Death, Resurrection, and Eternal Life. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe God is going to speak to us through these different things. And I, and I was praying to the Lord, Lord, you know, which, what is the verse that I need to speak to your people? And I was asking the Lord because I didn't know which verse would connect all of this. And let me tell you, the Lord is so wonderful. He gives us what we pray for. Amen. And so let us turn our Bibles today for our meditation. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2. Can somebody read that loudly? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Over here, dear children of God, it says how you need to lead your life in the first portion. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Over here, we see about the death. We see about the resurrection that Jesus, he looked for the joy that was set before him. And we see about eternal life and he sat down at the right hand throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is going to be our theme verse as we meditate on the word of the Lord. Amen. In our life, we need to keep our eyes fixed. We need to keep our eyes fixed. You know, if, if you have been ever been in a dark tunnel, and if you have ever been in a dark place, and it's completely dark, and you see a light in front, what happens? Your eyes get fixed on that, right? Your eyes get fixed on that because that is a place of hope. That is a place where you can escape from this darkness and go into light. If you look at a, a, a child who is maybe at a carnival, and this child, you know, looks at all the amusement, uh, all the rides over there, and the eyes uh, uh, look at that, and this child is running away from the parents. But when the mom calls the, pa uh, the child, what happens? Suddenly, this child will come back to sense, and then this child will look at the mom, and, you know, her eyes will get fixed at the mom, seeing that in the midst of this crowd, you know, the mom has called, I need to go to my mom. Is that right? So we see that, you know, that when we see light, we get attracted. When we see the call of somebody beloved in our life, we get attracted. Our eyes get fixed on that. Amen. The Bible is saying here, dear children of God, that we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Who is, who is the light? Who is the light? He has, amen, he has the light in the midst of your darkness. He has the light in the midst of your darkness. He has unbelievable, when you look unto him, there is an unbelievable hope. There is a hope for the future. When you look at him, there is love. More love than a mother can give. The Bible says that even if a child forgets, mother forgets a weaning child, I will love you more than that. Hallelujah. So when you look at Jesus, there is a, a, a unbelievable hope and there is unquenchable love, dear ch uh, children of God. And that is why we should not just look at Jesus. You need to take it a step further in the New Testament. It says you need to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the seraphims in heaven, I always say this, the seraphims in heaven, 
they have, you know, they have eyes to see. But yet, when they come in the presence of God, what do they do? They cover their eyes, right? They cover their eyes. Why? I believe, and this is my imagination, because when they open up their wings to see the glory of God, and when they see the ray of His glory, suddenly they cannot open His eyes. They will just close back the eyes. Why? Because they see the glory. They see a revelation of the glory of God. They see how holy He is, and then they close back their eyes, and they worship Him. Hallelujah. They are children of God. Amen. Let me tell you, the light rays, the, the glory that is coming from our Lord. Amen. You know, when Isaiah saw the glory of God, he said, Whoa, I am a person. I'm a sinful man. I have seen this glory of God. When you see the glory of God and when you look at Jesus, not only there is hope, there is a recognition in your life that there, that there, there are some shortcomings in your life. That there might be some sins in your life. There might be things in your life that need to be corrected in your life. Hallelujah. Because when you look at Jesus, there is a transformation that he desires for your life. Amen. There is a transformation that he desires for your life. Amen. Somebody said that life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. There is no point. An unsharpened pencil has no point at the end. There is no point without God, dear children of God. Life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It is without point. Amen. So the Lord wants you to see, keep your eyes fixed on him. You know, this morning as I got up, there was something on my eyes. I was wondering, I'm preparing this topic, and why is there something on my eyes? As I was coming, you know, the Lord reminded me that it's not only, you know, your eyes getting fixed somewhere else or distracted, but there is also a case where some dust can come into your eyes. Some allergy can come into your eyes. Something can come into your eyes that cause you not to see. Hallelujah. So what did I do? I went to my daughter and asked her, can you blow in my eyes? You know, and she did the traditional way of blowing in my eyes. Okay. Hallelujah. It reminded me, dear children of God, we need the wind of the Holy Spirit on our eyes. Amen. Amen. We need an air to come and just remove some particles of our eyes. We need some eye drops on our eyes. Amen. The word of God to wash and clean this eyes of our uh, 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 eyes of ours. We need to remove everything that is distracting us from God so that we can keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning time, the Spirit of God is telling you, whatever is distracting you from looking at Jesus, whatever is distracting you from keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, you need to remove those things, dear child of God. Oh, you need to ask, Lord, please cleanse my eyes. Hallelujah. You need to ask God, please remove the dust in my eyes this morning time. Oh, how many of us can pray that prayer today? How many of us can ask God, God, I want a cleansing in my eyes. Jesus, hallelujah. I need a cleansing so that I need to connect back to you. When I sit in prayer, I need to be able to see you. I need to be able to connect with you, to connect with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Many people are unable to pray because when they sit, they are unable to know God. They are unable to connect with Him. They are unable to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. This morning time, God is asking you to remove anything that is there in your eyes and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. The devil wants to distract you from where you look. You know, this is what he did in the Garden of Eden. What did he do? He showed Eve that something is there wonderful. Something is there beautiful. You know, God said, don't touch it. Don't eat from it. But the devil is coming and telling, why don't you look at it? Why don't you see how wonderful it is? Amen. 
Let us read Genesis 3, 5. Genesis 3, 5. Yes, 6, verse 6. Oh, when the woman saw that the tree was good and it was pleasant to the eyes and it was desirable to make one wise, at that time she took of that tree. Hallelujah. The devil enticed her attention to what God said not to look, not to eat. There is a lesson here, dear children of God. Do not lock your eyes on what the devil says to look. Do not lock your eyes on what the devil says to look. Many times the devil will tell you, lock your eyes on this thing. Lock your eyes on that thing. Lock your eyes on this thing. This will give you more wisdom. You know, the devil will say, when you want to come near God, the enemy will tell in your wife, no, no, no. Why don't you explore other things? Why don't you explore the fruit of this tree? Why don't you explore the fruit of that tree? It will give you more wisdom. Why don't you explore other religions? Why don't you explore other philosophies? Why don't you ex uh, explore other things in life? Why don't you explore your youth and enjoy your youth while it is there? The devil will point you to other trees in the field. Hallelujah. He will tell you, you eat from that tree or that tree. He will make it all look desirable. Amen. But God wanted them to eat from one tree. That is the tree of life. Amen. And the Lord said, don't take from this other tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but eat from the tree of life. Hallelujah. Dear children of God. The Lord is telling you this morning time, look at one tree, that is the tree of life, that is my Lord Jesus Christ. In him is life everlasting. In him is the glory, oh, dear children of God. In him you will find eternal life. Don't look at other trees in the field. Keep your eyes fixed on the tree of life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't look at other things, dear children of God. When the tree of life is present, when everything is present for you to move forward, to live in the garden, to dwell with God, to enjoy in the presence of God, the enemy will say, why don't you explore this other thing? Why don't you explore this other thing? No, you need to say, I will obey what the Lord has told me in my life. Amen? Glory to God. We know... Abraham's nephew Lot and Lot also locked his eyes on something he locked his eyes on Sodom and Gomorrah okay the Bible says uh, uh, that he kept looking at the plush valleys he kept looking at the wonderful things in Sodom and Gomorrah and he said I'm going to go there so he went a little and then after that he kept on looking at Sodom and Gomorrah and then he moved a little further then he kept on looking, then he moved a little. He started planting his house nearer, nearer, nearer Sodom and Gomorrah and ultimately entered into their city. Hallelujah. You know, if you lock your eyes on what the devil tells you to look, it will land you in destruction. Amen. If you lock your eyes, what the devil tells you to do, it will land you in destruction. Slowly by slowly, you will think initially it is good, it is desirable, it is wonderful. But slowly by slowly, you are entering into Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened? What happened there? Lot lost everything. He lost his wife, he lost his wealth. You know, the future of his daughters was destroyed. Everything Lot had was destroyed because he went into Sodom and Gomorrah. When you read 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, we see the Bible calls Lot as righteous Lot. Amen? The Bible is calling Lot as righteous Lot. Can we somebody quickly read that, please? Very quickly. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Uh, 
Amen. And he delivered righteous Lot. Amen. So Lot was righteous, yet he was looking at the wrong direction. Oh, is somebody getting this today? Lot is righteous, but if you look at the right direction and you go in the di right, wrong direction and you dwell in the wrong direction and you dwell in the city and you dwell in things that is wrong, hallelujah, even though your heart, you might say, is right, but everything else around you is wrong, amen, it will destroy you completely. You will lose all that you have, dear child of God, hallelujah. God was even willing to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah entirely, but for the prayer of Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you that, that you might be righteous, you might think I'm fine, but you are looking at the wrong place today. The Spirit of God is telling you this morning time, look and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Lock your eyes on Jesus. That means if something else is distracting you, come back to the looking at the Lord. Come back to looking at his word. Come back to looking at his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. If other things are distracting you and taking you away from God, you need to turn back today in Jesus' name. God is telling you need to lead your life by looking at Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, dear brothers and sisters, that when you are able to fix your eyes on Jesus, you know, the way you look at things become different. Because you see things through the eyes of heaven. Amen? So when you look your... Uh, when you look at the situations through Jesus, through the eyes of heaven, things look different. If you look at things with your flesh, eyes of flesh, the things look different. You might think, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to go this, I need to do this to accomplish these things. But when you look at things through the eyes of heaven, let me tell you, there is divine guidance in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is divine guidance in the presence of God because you are looking through the eyes of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. That is how God the Father looks at us. He looks at us through the blood of Jesus. That is why we are sanctified in the eyes of God the Father. Hallelujah. Similarly, when we look at things, we need to look at things through the blood of Jesus. We need to look at th things through the eyes of Jesus. We need to look at things through the eyes of heaven, dear children of God. Hallelujah. We need a biblical worldview, not a worldly worldview. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need to see things, all our circumstances, through the eyes of God, through the eyes of the Bible, through the eyes of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dear children of God, when you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you, that the giants look different. You know, there are giants in life that is against our life. There was a moment where all of the Israelites were looking at someone. They were looking at a giant. They were looking at the giant Goliath, the Philistine giant. Everyone was looking at him. Their eyes were fixed on him. During the, uh, the Jewish tradition says that during the prayer of Shema, which is the prayer where the Israelites pray, saying, the Lord is one, the Lord God, you are one. And that prayer, when they're praying that prayer, at that time, Goliath would roar from the other side and threaten the people. When, it, when it's the time of prayer, he would come roaring and threaten the people of Israel. You know, the enemy, the giants of life come when you sit in prayer. The enemy will come when you're sitting in prayer. The giants will rise up and you are confused. It will confuse you, dear children of God. You don't know what to do as you walk in life because the giants are standing up against you. But there was a David. Hallelujah. There was a David. He did not see with the eyes of the world. He saw with the eyes of God. Amen. And what did he look at the giant and says, say? He did not see the size of the giant, no. 
The others were looking at the size, the height, the hands of the giant. He had six fingers. They were looking at all these things. But David did not look at that. David saw something. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine to challenge the armies of the living God? Hallelujah. That is what David looked. You know, David had a different way of looking. He said, if in today's language, he will say, who is this devil that is challenging my family? Who is this devil that is challenging my future? Who is this devil that is challenging the church? I'm going to come against it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is challenging the armies of God? Oh, come on, dear brother and sister. Come on, dear brother and sister. Your eyesight needs to change. The way you look at things need to change today. Hallelujah. You need to see with the eyes of heaven. Hallelujah. Who is this demonic power that is coming against my life? In Jesus' name, I will take it out. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Is there some spiritual believers here who are ready to worship God? Some spiritual believers who is ready to put down the works of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Who will move forward with a stone and throw it against the enemy and the enemy will come down. Amen. Who will take the word of God and release it upon the enemy and the enemy will come down, dear brother and sister. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you need to look at giants of your life through the eyes of heaven. Oh, let us ask God, God, give me a heavenly vision this morning time. Lord, I need a heavenly vision. Hallelujah. I need to see things through your eyes. I don't want to see things through my natural eyes, but through a, a supernatural eyes. Hallelujah. I need a different vision, oh God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know that Spurgeon, who was known as the preacher of preachers, he was a mighty servant of God. Spurgeon was, you know, in his young age, he came from a Christian family, but he was unhappy. He was despair. There was a lot of desperation in him. There was no peace in his life. He knew that if he died that day, that he would go to hell. He had dreams of, uh, you know, judgment. And all these things were plaguing Spurgeon's mind. He, didn't know, he did not know what to do. He did many things in life. And one day he went, he went to church. And when they went to church, there was a pastor there. And this pastor was preaching. And this is what changed Spurgeon's life. Isaiah 45 verses 22. Can we read that? Isaiah 45 verses 22. This changed Spurgeon's life when he heard this particular verse. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no one else. Hallelujah. You know, Spurgeon, when he heard this verse, the Bible says, look to me and ye be saved. Hallelujah. When he, saw, when he heard the, that word, that to look at Jesus, his life changed. Because it is easy to look at Jesus. The poor can look at Jesus. The rich can look at Jesus. Anybody can look at Jesus. Amen. Whatever your issue is, you can look at Jesus. May, the male can look at Jesus. The female can look at Jesus. Irrespective of your race or creed, you can look at Jesus. It does not matter who you are. Today the Lord is telling, look at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your eyes need to keep fixed on Jesus. You know, in the Old Testament, and this is very key, I need you to pay attention to this part. In the Old Testament, on Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement, the most holiest day, you know, the high priest would go, and the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. There's only one day a year the high priest can go into the Holy of Holies. There's only one day a year. He would go into the Holy of Holies, atoning for the sins of entire Israel. And he would go into that Holy of Holies. They would tie a rope at his leg 
and as he goes into the holy of holies the reason being if he because of a sin because of sin dies over there they can pull him out of the holy of holies okay they can pull his body out of the holy of holies and that is why they would um, they would uh, that's why they used to put that rope and when this high priest goes in the people outside are looking their eyes are fixed on the high priest they are looking if the high priest will come out safely they are looking if the high priest will come out from that place uh, you know without any harm they know as soon as they see the high priest coming out of the tabernacle they know one thing their sins are forgiven amen they know that israel you know god has approved our prayers god has sanctified us and they know that there will not be a curse on this land this year there will be the blessings of god god will send the rain god will bless israel because god has accepted the petition of that high priest hallelujah dear children of god hallelujah let me tell you we have a high priest that is our lord jesus christ amen we have a high priest that is our lord jesus christ when he took the sins of mankind amen and when you confess your sins he takes that sin. he goes in the presence he went he goes to the holy of holies and let me tell you when he went to the holy of holies amen he did not die there and it's over the story is not over what happened dear child of god when the lord took your sins on the cross he died but he rose up again hallelujah he died but he rose up again dear children of god amen and he rose up again to give you the deliverance to give you the healing amen so when you when your eyes is fixed on jesus you know my lord jesus has will come out of the holy of holies dear children of god amen and when you see him you know he, oh your sins have been washed away amen and that is why dear child of god through jesus amen when my jesus came out of that holy of holies he tore the veil that was there amen the veil of separation that was there the bible says it tore down during his death the veil of separation tore down so that you may you and me can enter the holy of holies through jesus christ amen and the bible says he has now become the door and you enter through his flesh into the holy of holies amen dear children of god our god is staying as an intercessor amen in the high places for us as a high priest for us amen and that is why the bible is saying you need to use the name of jesus while you pray because he is your high priest amen he is your high priest so dear children of god amen hallelujah let me tell you my jesus your eyes must be fixed on jesus because he can wash away your sins he died on the cross of calvary and he took away all your sins when you confess your sins he took it and he removed it for you and he is coming out amen and when you see jesus you have been delivered from your sin hallelujah dear children of god hallelujah my jesus died for us on the cross of calvary oh hallelujah and he rose up from the dead he is not dead he is alive today amen he is not dead he is alive today if you confess your sin today if there is any sin that is holding on to you and or if you if the spirit of god is asking you lord i have not given my heart to the lord jesus christ I have not given my heart to the Lord Jesus. The Lord is asking you, look unto me today. Give your heart to me today. Give your heart to me and I will wash away your sin. Give your sins to me, confess it before me. I will wash away your sin and you will come out clean. Hallelujah. I will sanctify you. I will wash you. I will cleanse you. I will make you a new person. I will give you a new heart hallelujah can everybody close their eyes this morning time hallelujah keep your eyes fixed on jesus 
Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Dear child of God, do not look, do not lock your eyes on anything else. Lock your eyes on Jesus. Whatever the enemy is distracting you from, today you can say, Lord, I look to you. I confess my sins. Wash me by your blood. Oh Lord, I look to you. You are the one that cleanses my sin. You are the one that washes my sin. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You are my hope when there is no hope. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, your love is more than anybody else can give unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today the Lord is asking you to look unto Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't fix your eyes like Lot on other things. Don't fix your eyes like Eve, dear children of God. Look at Jesus today. Hallelujah. If there is anybody today that you, you're saying in your heart, I want to rededicate my life. If there's anybody that you're saying that I've not accepted Jesus as my Savior, I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. The Lord is giving you an opportunity today. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving you an opportunity today to say, Lord, I want to come near to you. Hallelujah. If you feel that you are that person today, amen, that wants to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you can lift up your hands today. Because the Lord is looking at your life and he is the one that is giving you hope, dear children of God. He is the one that is giving you life. In him there is life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If there is any sin in your life, if anything that is blocking you from looking at Jesus today, wash it clean by the blood of Jesus. If anyone wants to rededicate their life to the Lord, hallelujah, you can lift up your hands today. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, I see some hands that are lifted up, dear children of God. Some people who want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Oh, that the blood of Jesus may cover you. Oh, that the blood of Jesus may cleanse you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't look at me. I cannot save you. Don't look at anybody else. We cannot save you. Look unto Jesus. Amen. Let us ask God to cleanse us. Lord Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me. I surrender my life in your presence. May your Holy Spirit wash my eyes. Spirit of God, fill my life. Cleanse me, O oh God. Any disconnection today be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anything that disconnects you from God, you need to remove. And let us connect with the Almighty God. Let our eyes be fixed on Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful time that you have given us, Lord, to be in your presence. Lord Jesus, there are many things that distract us. But as the Bible says, we fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. We look unto you today. You are our hope and our salvation. In you, Lord, is life, life abundant. When the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, Lord, you said, I have come to give you life, abundant life. Lord Jesus, there is hope in you. Help us to see things through your eyes, I pray, Heavenly Father. We surrender our lives in your presence, O God. Lord, we pray for a cleansing by the blood of Jesus. O Lord, we pray that your hand be upon each and every one, O Father. Let everyone encounter you, O Father. Let there be a transformation, I pray, O God. Let their eyes be locked on Jesus, Lord. As they lead their life, let them find the life in Christ Jesus. Father God, we pray that anybody who is sick, that you may heal them. That anybody has any bondages in their life, it may be broken, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, wherever the enemy is touching any family, any person today, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bind and rebuke the works of the enemy, O oh God. Anything that is stopping them from looking at Jesus, Lord, we bind and rebuke the works of the enemy today. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the power of the Lord may descend on your people, oh God. Let the hand of heaven be upon each and every one, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for blessing us together today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you because you are our God and Savior. Lord, we magnify your holy name. We thank you for answering our prayer. All glory be to thee. In Jesus' name we ask all this and pray. Amen. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us. Amen. Let us worship the Lord that has given us the victory this morning time. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you all. God bless you.